City of Rome, through the ages it's been called the Eternal City. Let's explore how eternal it really is. This is where ancient, medieval, and 21st century collide. Lungo Tevere, the ancient bridges that cross the Tiber River, St. Peter's Basilica, the Vatican Museums, the Roman Forum, the Fountain of Trevi, the beautiful Piazza Navona. Walking through Rome is like walking back into time. The dream that was once Rome is truly still here. You just have to have an eye for it. You'll see it. You will definitely get a taste of eternity. We are making our way to the Colosseum today. Walking towards the Colosseum on Imperial Way, we get to see all kind of interesting things here. And there it is, built by Emperor Vespasian Flavius. Started in 72 AD and completed in 80 AD. The most grandiose arena in the Roman Empire, known by the ancient world as Flavian Theater. It's the largest stadium of all antiquity. It measures 620 feet long, 512 feet wide, 158 feet tall. It's as tall as a 17-story building, and it occupies six acres of land. It can hold 50 to 70,000 spectators, depending who you ask. 80 entrances, and each one was numbered. The number will correspond with a ticket, just like stadiums today. The arena is the same dimensions as a soccer field. Out of the four floors, the first three had 80 enormous arches that contained 16-foot statues. It was built oval-shaped and not circular to contain more spectators. It's two Greek theaters back-to-back -back and formed a new standard of amphitheater. Today, it's only a skeleton of what it once was. It was totally covered with slabs of marble and to affix them to the walls, that we use marble nails, not made of metal, to prevent the rust staining the white marble. It's been standing for 2,000 years, and it was amazingly built in less than 10 years. Using 12,000 Jews who came as slaves of Titus, were later freed and established themselves in the area of Rome known as Trastevere, meaning other side of the Tiber River. Caesar allowed them public meetings. Cicero recognized their importance as traders and artisans. But how did the Romans accomplish such a feat? It was a trick they knew very well and repeated over and over again, and that was the arch. Just like some aqueducts, arches on top of arches. This way the forces would be weighed towards the ground. It took 100,000 tons of marble, 300,000 tons of iron. During the first decade under the reign of Titus, Vespasian's son, there were water battles at the Roman Colosseum, believe it or not. When Titus died, his younger brother, Domitian, took the throne and during his reign, he extended the Colosseum by adding another tier and also the Hypergeum. It was a vast network of rooms, cells, tunnels and passages under the wooden floor of the arena. This meant that water battles at the Colosseum would no longer be an option, but the Hypergeum provided the facilities to create fantastic special effects via trap doors and lifts, bringing wild animals and gladiators quickly into the arena. Beasts and gladiators emerging from the sand and the tricks were elevators. You can see still some elevator shafts very clearly. 
when they were activated they would go up very quickly and once on top a ramp would collapse from the arena floor to meet with the elevator while creating a dust cloud they will suddenly see a dozen gladiators appear from the dust. Under these basements you would have cages of lions and other beasts but also gladiators and laborers. Here you will notice boars of lead. It's all that remains of an axle manually driven by strong men. There would be many beneath the floor. By turning it it would raise up cages and releasing beasts and gladiators to the arena surface. Imagine the effects it would have on the spectators. They have a model display of what the system may have looked like. It makes a lot of sense. It's pretty amazing. As we go on the upper level, we enter a display area and we find something very interesting. There's an awning on top of the Colosseum called Valarium. It was a type of an awning used in Roman times. It stretched over the whole of the seating area in the Colosseum. It provided both shade and slight protection from the rain. Although the main use of the Valarium was to create a ventilation updraft creating circulation and a cool breeze just like the uh, oculus in the Pantheon. Precisely how it was supported is a matter of many opinions. It could be extended or retracted with ropes and pulleys according to the position of the sun. The original Roma shades. Awnings were a common feature of all Roman theaters and amphitheaters as the pampered audiences demanded comfortable surroundings. 240 mass corbels were positioned around the top of the Colosseum which supported the retractable awning or velarium. A corbel was the bracket projecting from the face of a wall which was used to support the awning. The sockets where they stood can still be seen. The velarium or awning covered over one-third of the arena of the Colosseum and sloped down towards the center. The panels of cloth that the awning consisted of would have been tapered. At the top floor of the Colosseum there's a display, if you want to call it, um, of uh, artifacts found during the diggings of the Hypergeum and some were just brought here that were found in other places. It's real interesting to see. It's a quick walk. Gladiatorial fights stopped in 45 AD. The Colosseum fell in disuse in the 6th century AD. The Roman Empire had dawned and the city was abandoned. In the following centuries it was used by artisans as stores, pastures, hospitals, and even as a cemetery. The first popes instead used it as a quarry of marble and stones to construct the uh, Campidoglio, Palazzo Venezia and ultimately St. Peter. 
Today the Colosseum is attracting spectators again, except this time the spectacle is the Colosseum itself. The 1349 earthquake knocked down the southern facade. It created a pile of limestone that local builders began to plunder. Every bit of iron was scavenged from it, pulling all the clams that held the travertine in place and further destabilized the structure. Till this day, nothing is holding the Colosseum together except gravity and good design. I hope you enjoyed this fantastic place. Let's have a great future as we learn from the past.